Today, we're going to be having a chat about how to set sales targets and uh, make sure that your team are aware of them and they're effective and that it's helping you grow your business. If you are tuning in on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up. All right, so let's have a chat about setting sales targets. I think a lot of people struggle uh, when it comes to setting sales targets because they're not sure about how to go about doing it. And, And I think one of the biggest faux pas is that we pick a number that sounds impressive. So we might uh, set a sales target based on a number that we think is going to be an impressive number an impressive number to hit. So we might say, I want to hit $2 million per year. And this happens, right? I ask people when they tell me, I say, what's your sales target? They say, it's $2 million per year or a million dollars per year, or whatever it might be. And I say, why did you pick that number? And they go, I don't know. Not a good reason really, is it? Okay. So when it comes to setting sales targets, it should be because you know um, you know, ha- that you can handle the work, number one. So you've got to be able to uh, have the the resources to be able to deliver that level of sales. So if you're in a business, a service-based business, or if you're in a, um, you know, product-based business or a manufacturing type business, you've got to be able to keep up with the sales. When you look at Tesla right now, I, uh, I'm i quite keen on the Tesla cars, those electric cars. And I jumped on their website the other day and I was looking at the, uh, the 90 the X90D or something it is, the, that model, and it said that I had to leave a $6,000 deposit and it was a one-year wait. Um, now, they're lucky right now. There's not too many people doing what they did. If there was a lot of competition for electric cars like Tesla, maybe they'd be missing out on sales because they weren't keeping up with it. So it wouldn't matter what their sales targets were for the year, um, regardless of whether competition or not, they're not going to be able to hit any higher than what their production can cope with because they're limited. And I believe their limitation is in battery production. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a Tesla expert, but I think that's what's going on. So first of all, you want to make sure that you can actually, you have the resources. So the people, the time, the the the, the manufacturing capability, the products, whatever it is that you need to get sales, you want to make sure that you've got that available. The second thing you want to think about when you start setting sales targets is what is the desired outcome? So if you've said that my uh, target is $2 million, there's got to be a reason for that. And it's typically got to be uh, you know, how much of that are you going to get to keep? It's called profit. And I see too many people in business setting sales goals because it is a fancy number or a number that sounds impressive rather than thinking about what do you want to get out of the business. And when it comes to setting goals in business or targets, it is really about the outcome that you're looking to achieve before you set the overall goal. So if you said, I want to make $100,000 a year, and you knew that it took you half a million dollars a year in sales to make that happen because you've done the budgeting, then that's fine. That's a good reason to set that target. Um, But your sales target should never, ever be a number just with a bunch of zeros on the end because it just shows me that you haven't put any thought or effort into understanding how you got to that target. Your sales target, now it's fine if you said, Ben, but I rounded it up after working it out. That's fine. But typically a sales... um, my sales targets will be very weird in in the dollar amounts, never the cents, but certainly the dollar amount, because it's very uh, accurate as to the amount of sales I need to get based on the profitability I want to personally receive out of my business, uh, or the number of people's lives I want to change, or the number of employees I want to have, or whatever it might be. So your sales targets have got to have more meaning to them than just a number, right? And it's about it is about setting, you know, what is it you want to get out of your business and understanding. Uh, you know, how to make that happen with your revenues. The other thing then, once you've got a good sales target or a a meaningful, not a good sales target, that's not the right wording, a meaningful sales target set is then to start sharing it with people and and be okay sharing it with your team and why you're doing that. If it means the company's going to reach a certain profitability, let them know that. Let them know that at that particular point that the company can then afford uh, to pay out bonuses or support charities or uh, upgrade its facilities or whatever it might be that you're trying to achieve because that then gets everyone excited about the sales target. So rather than that just being some wild number that you've just picked out of the, the sky, it actually becomes a meaningful number that people want to drive towards. So there you go. That's today's tip. Uh, set your sales targets with a meaningful purpose behind it and you'll find that that will uh, make it a lot easier for people to get focused on it and get motivated by targeting that particular uh, sales target or goal, whatever it is that you set. Uh, And if you haven't already, go to dbtpodcast.com and uh, join the Daily Business Tips tribe and uh, you'll get uh, offers and stuff that nobody else is uh, is getting and you'll never miss out on an episode. So dbtpodcast.com and join the Daily Business Tips tribe. I'd like to finish with a quote today's quote is by a fellow called Seth Godden. He says, change is not a threat. It's an opportunity. Survival is not the goal. Transformative success is. Thanks, Seth Godden. Thank you for tuning in. Until tomorrow, have a profitable day.